Good morning. Now, on your behalf, I have waded through this book, Darwin's Doubt, and it's by Stephen Mayer. And it's extremely good, but lengthy with a lot of long words. So I'm just going to give you a, a very few pointers from this book. He starts off um, about 600 million years ago, where they find fossils of one-celled organisms, like amoebas, algae, plankton, and bacteria. And then we come to 570 to 535 million years ago. And now you get creatures like sponges turning up. Now they have four different types of cell. They don't need a nervous, a digestive, or a circulatory system. They use the water flushing through them to get their food, oxygen, and so on. Even so, they still can make glass. So they're phenomenal creatures. But we've gone from one type of cell to four different types of cell. Now we come to the Cambrian era, which was 530 million years ago, sort of. And suddenly, an explosion of life shows up in the fossil record. And you get creatures like this. If I can get it up. Um, can I show you? Can you see that? It's a trilobite. Now, this one has um, 10 to 20 different types of cell. And we have other animals turning up at the same time see those flatworms and so on. All these different, completely different animals with completely different types of cell. So can you go from a one-celled creature to another one which is very difficult? Different, sorry. Well, not really. The cell is extremely complicated. It's made up of many proteins. Not only that, but it's alive. And that's something that evolutionists really stumble over, is what is life? So to go from a protein which is not alive to a cell which is, you've got problems. Not only that. So, scientists uh, did an experiment I don't know if you can see at the bottom of this page, of the, this page, sorry. There's two complicated diagrams there. These are two proteins. Now, I've explained proteins to you before, if you remember. They are long strings of amino acids, each in their correct order. And then they fold up as in this diagram. <coughs> Now, those two proteins there are quite similar. In fact, they're the only proteins which have similarities. So scientists tried to go from one protein to another by making the changes themselves. And they wanted to do it in just a few changes to prove evolution. But they couldn't do it. There were far too many changes. Now, you really need to read the book. But what they're saying is that mutations do occur. And we know that because children get sick if their DNA has uh, gone faulty. <coughs> That's just one change. But for proteins to work, you've got to have lots of different changes all at once for it to work. Just to give you an example, um, if you want to go from a four-celled sponge to someone like us with a circulatory system, you need to go, you need to produce blood, which has red blood cells, white blood cells, plasma, etc. You also need a clotting system. You need veins and arteries to deliver it. You need a heart, which has a completely different cell, to pump the blood around. One mutation takes a very long time. Two mutations at the same time would take even longer. Three mutations at the same time and beneficial ones would take longer 
than the Earth has been in existence. And for any more changes to happen at the same time, it's just not possible. And the changes are phenomenal. For instance, the difference between us and apes are 60 different proteins. Proteins are not simple things. So, now, there's another problem that um, scientific evolutionists have, and that is that, here we are. I don't know if you can see those different eyes, but all of those different eyes, which are completely different and focus differently, come from the same genetic information. The DNA is exactly the same. So what's causing the difference? Well, the difference is, and I have it here written out for you, if you can, can you read that? It's epigenic information. And I'll write it uh, below so that you can look it up on the internet. There's far more information in the sugar code, which can attach to the outside of the cell and to proteins in the cell to say what happens to the DNA. What It gives more information. Then again, you have DNA methylation. I'll write it down for you. That's where molecules of carbon and hydrogen attach it to the genes and switch them off. So the genetic information, if it changes by mutation, might not make any difference at all because you you need all this other information. Evolution is mathematically impossible in the way that evolutionists wish it to go by mutations. It all points to an extremely clever, intelligent designer. But to understand this properly, you can read the book. It will only take you a couple of years. Um, and see how you get on with it, but it will it build up your faith, which we need when Watchtower is trying to destroy our faith by not showing any love, which the Creator has asked us to do. I hope you coped with this morning's video, but thank you for watching. <laughs>